Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Amber, I upload beauty and true crime content. If they're the type of videos that you like to watch, then why not hit that subscribe button and come along and join our little family. And if you're already part of the family, then make sure that notification bell switched on just so you're notified of whenever I upload a video. And now we can get into today's case. I'd just like to give a quick disclaimer before I enter the case in just saying that I do not mean any disrespect to anyone mentioned in this video and that these videos do contain adult references. If that makes you feel uncomfortable in any way, that is fine. You can just click off this video and there will be plenty of the ones that are more suited to you on my channel and today we're going to be talking about Philip Markoff. Philip Markoff responded to a Craigslist ad for massage services. He met a masseuse slash former call girl and murdered her and then he became known as the Craigslist killer. Philip Haynes Markoff was born on February 12th of 1986 in Sherrill, New York. He was the son of Susan and Richard Markoff. He had an older brother who was named Jonathan and he also had a half-sister whose father was Susan's second husband Gary Carroll. Philip grew up in a small town in New York and he excelled academically. He also participated in a variety of student activities which included the National Honours Society. Philip attended Vernon Verona Sherrill Central School, god that's a mouthful, and he was part of the bowling team, the golf team, youth court and history club as well as being a National Honours Society member. After graduating from high school he became a pre-med student at the State University of New York's Albany campus. Philip spent a lot of time focusing on his studies and volunteering in the emergency room of the Albany Medical Centre Hospital. In his free time he enjoyed staying up all night playing poker with friends and he had a reputation for being a serious player who did not like to lose and he didn't take losing lightly. In 2005 Philip met Megan McAllister while they were volunteering at the hospital. Both of them were students at Sunny and soon become college sweethearts. She was a senior and Philip was a sophomore. Their first date was a few months later on November 11th of 2005. Philip graduated in just three years with a bachelor's degree in biology and he was accepted into Boston's University School of Medicine. Megan had also planned on attending medical school but she was not accepted at the schools that she wanted to attend so the couple moved to Boston and Megan put her plans on hold. They lived in Quincy, Massachusetts in a High Point apartment complex. In 2008 Philip and Megan were engaged and they set their wedding date for August 14th of 2009. Megan kept herself busy planning the wedding where Philip attended medical school and he also got into a bad habit of going to the casinos which meant that he'd racked up over $130,000 of debt. In April of 2009 Boston police were investigating two separate attacks on women who had advertised erotic massage services online and they had planned to meet with their client at a luxury hotel. On April 10th of 2009 29 year old Trisha Leffler who was an escort was gagged bound and robbed at gunpoint in the Western Hotel in Boston by a man who had responded to an ad that she'd placed on Craigslist. She was also also robbed of both of her debit card and $800 in cash. Four days later, Julissa Briceman was found murdered in the doorway of her Boston Marriott hotel room. It appeared that she'd been trying to fight off her attacker when she was shot multiple times. She had placed an ad on Craigslist offering erotic massage services and had scheduled to meet a man named Andy at her hotel room. Police said that the confrontation between Julissa and her killer seemed to have begun with an attempted robbery and it ended when she fought the zip tie restraints that had bound her. Police believe that the same attacker was linked to the attempted robbery of Cynthia Melton, who was an exotic dancer offering lap dance services. Philip had scheduled an appointment to meet her at the Holiday Inn in Rhode Island through use of a disposable cell phone. The three incidents were similar in motive, which appeared to be robbery. The attacks were all on women offering, offering sexual services. The dates were close together and two of the women had been bound with plastic cords. Through security camera footage and electronic evidence, police determined that the person of interest in the three incidents was a young blonde clean cut man about six feet tall. This confirmed the police's theory that they were looking for the same suspect. Police traced an email that had been sent to Jalissa in a response to a Craigslist ad and the electronic trail led to Philip's Boston apartment. Police followed Philip for several days and finally on April 20th of 2009 they pulled him over while he was driving to a local casino with his fiancée Megan. Philip was accused of murder, armed robbery and kidnapping. During the investigation of his apartment police located a gun, bullets matching those found in Jalissa's case, plastic zip tie, duct tape, a laptop with communication to Jalissa, several trace phone cell phones and several pairs of stolen woman's underwear, two of which belonged to, to Trisha. Upon the discovery of the evidence Philip was arraigned on murder and 
facing gun charges for the slaying of Jalissa Briceman. He pled not guilty. His trial was originally scheduled for the t July 2010, but then was delayed till March 2011. Megan, his fiance, initially affirmed her belief in him and that she had thought that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. She full on stood by him. She called him beautiful inside and out. On April 29th, she visited him in jail to call off their wedding. And then on June 11th, she visited him a second time. And this was to tell him that she did not plan on seeing him for a long period of time, if ever again. While in jail, Philip actually made several unsuccessful suicide attempts. At various times, he was on suicide watch or in the jail psychiatric unit. On August 15th of 2010, Philip was actually found dead in his jail cell. It was one year and one day after his scheduled wedding. It was determined that he had committed suicide through self-inflicted wounds and suffocation. ABC News reported that Philip had evidently used an object shaved into a razor to slash major arteries in his ankles, legs and neck. He covered his head with a plastic bag and stuffed toilet paper down his throat. So jail authorities could not resuscitate him. Then covered himself head to toe with a blanket before he died. He wrote the name Megan on his cell wall in on his cell wall in blood and placed photographs of Megan throughout his cell. The speculation about why he had gone on to commit these acts was actually because people believed that he was just trying to clear his gambling debts so he basically just wanted to rob the girls but obviously it was a robbery gone bad but this has never ever been confirmed. Boston University learned of the charges against Philip and he was then suspended from his course. Very strange case and I do honestly one million do believe that theory, one million percent believe that theory that he did do this for the robbery motive. It just seems that way. He didn't sexually assault any of the girls so it clearly wasn't that he didn't murder the first girl he just robbed her so it was clearly clear to me that he did rob them because he needed the money because obviously he did have gambling debts so that was the most obvious reason for it and you know it's quite sad that some people they get themselves into this place where they feel like desperate times calls for desperate measures and I just think it's a really really crazy case and it just shows you what situations gambling and things can drive people into if that was the whole reason and why he did it we don't know because obviously he is dead now and I think the final straw for him was the fact that Megan did no longer want to have anything to do with him because for him obviously it seemed like she was his life and without her he obviously clearly didn't feel like he needed to live but anyway guys I would love to know your thoughts and theories on this case let me know that down below and I shall see you in the next one thanks so much for watching